from the First United Methodist Church this 25th Sunday after Pentecost. We hope that everybody will join us following the worship service today for our dinner on the grounds. Get the chance to visit a little more with Pastor Ralph and Janet. Um, we have live music. We've got Winky Hicks and his band. I think a lot of people know how good he is. Uh, we have a special children's activity area. It's an obstacle course, so that should be interesting. Um, we will decorate the church next Sunday, uh, the 21st, following the morning worship service. We need help hanging the wreaths and decorating the Christmas, Christmas tree to get us prepared for Advent. Please let the church office know if you can help or fill out the little tear off in your bulletin and put it in the offering plate today. There will be a step sing here in our church uh, on Sunday, November 28th at 3.30. Bring a chair and a blanket if you think you need it to help us prepare to usher in the Advent season. On um, uh, December 11th, um, yeah, December 11th on Saturday, we'll have a drive through dinner and bake sale, and the uh, funds will go to uh, our United Methodist Children's Home, and there'll be more details on this later. There are several meetings this month. The trustees will meet Monday, November 15th, the Finance Committee. Tuesday, November 16th, and the Leadership Council, Wednesday, November 17th. All three meetings are at 5.30, and they will be held in the rest of the Bible session. Thank you, Ann. I appreciate you doing that. Um, welcome home, sailor. Uh, I don't get to say that very often. <laughs> we are a uh, grateful Gardner venue this week. Uh, thank you, by the way, to all of our work crews from yesterday and the Saturdays before that have come and done such great work cleaning up the church and getting ready. Thank you to our SPRC and Jody and others that have helped uh, prepare our day of celebration. We're looking forward to it. Uh, and I am well aware that I stand between you and fried chicken and baked beans and apparently some cake swimming in a moat of chocolate. God bless us everyone. Amen. <laughs> I probably shouldn't do it that quick. The bishop may be watching. Uh, but uh, thank you so much for all of you who made this day possible. And I appreciate all your hard work. It looks beautiful. And uh, we are alive. We'll talk more about that in, in just a moment. Would you stand and join me this morning? Take your hymnal and turn to page uh, 748. And we will share uh, Psalm 16, 5 through 11 as our call to worship this morning. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The, the lines have, have fallen, fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a glorious heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me. The Lord is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also dwells secure. For you do not give me up to shield, or let your godly one see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Let's pray. God and Father of us all, God the Son, Savior of us all, God, the Holy Spirit, sustainer of us all, you gather us in community to worship you. You create all the moments of our lives, each giving each its meaning and its purpose. Strengthen us to witness continually to the love of Jesus Christ, that we may hold fast in times of trial, even to the end of the ages. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is And Are We Yet Alive? Wesley would have his preachers 
seen this when they got together for their yearly meeting. Now, remember that many of the Methodist preachers back in the day were circuit riders. And the fact that they were alive <laughs> and able to get to the annual meeting truly was something to give thanks for. And so I am grateful that all of you are here today and that we are alive to see each other. Let's sing together. saying, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We are grateful for your continued giving. Today is the day where we uh, give our pledge cards. I invite you to place those in one of the offering plates. If you didn't have a chance to do it before service, I encourage you to do it as you leave to go eat dinner. You gotta go out one of these doors to go eat. Don't go out that door. But if you do, go by this door first. Leave your pledge card. And uh, I'm grateful for your giving. Grateful for what God has blessed us with. And now we sing the doxology and thanksgiving to God for what we have received from God's own hand. Join me on the front pew. What's up, bro? Hey, fellas. 
Oh, wow. You are a super fifth grader. <laughs> <laughs> hey, baby, you know what this is? You do? Y'all know what that is? Can. It is a can. You know what's in it? Drink. Yup. You know what kind? Drink. Cherry wine. Cherry wine. Cheer wine. Yeah. It's kind of a. Actually, I, I don't know what it tastes like. It, it's kind of cherry, kind of Dr. Peppery, kind of. You, you ever seen that? Well, the first time I ever saw it, my friend Michael Feely, you may want that pappy back. My friend Michael Feely uh, introduced me to cheer wine. It's a really great drink. I finally found it with zero calories, zero sugar. Still got that dose of caffeine. This reminds me of my friend Michael Feely. He is a good friend of mine. I named my son after him and Michael the Archangel. And so whenever I see a cheer wine, it reminds me of my friend. Um, we celebrated All Saints last Sunday. And as we celebrated all, all Saints, we remembered our friends that had passed on and gone to be with the Lord that had died. And so that reminded us of our friends. When I look around the sanctuary, I'm reminded of another friend of ours and that is Jesus. We've got pictures in our windows that talk about his life and when he was young. And uh, one of my favorites is when he's with his friends here in this window, just before he went back to heaven. And that window reminds me that Jesus loved his friends and his friends loved him. And so we're gonna gather to have a meal here in a little bit. And we're gonna be with our friends and we're gonna be reminded that Jesus loves us and he called us friends as well. So maybe it's not a cheer wine for you. Maybe it's a window. Maybe it's a color of a jersey that reminds you of your friends. Let's thank God for our friends. Lord, God, thank you for our friends. Thank you for Jesus who loved us and called us friends. Help us to love our friends as he loves us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Let's pray. God, we're grateful that we can gather today. We're grateful for your church gathered in so many places. Lord, some of your churches gather in secret and they worship. Others gather in large cathedrals or large sanctuaries in the open and they worship. Others, Lord, gather online through Facebook and other digital means and they worship. We're grateful that your church gathers to worship. And we're grateful that your church gathers to work. God, we ask your blessing upon all that we do in worship and in witness and in work as we seek to live out the gospel, as we seek to give flesh and bone to the gospel through the love of Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray, God, for the world that you've created, for creation itself, for your children alive in your creation, for those, Lord, who live lives that are difficult, that are hard, that are sparse and bare of love and nutrition and secure, safe shelter. God, for those, we pray that the leaders of those nations would do all in their power for all of their people and that the least of your creation might be honored and encouraged and taken care of by the strongest of your creation. God, as we are all bound together through your creative power and the love of Jesus, we pray that the Holy Spirit would empower us to reach out to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For those, Lord, who suffer, who are hurting in body, mind, and spirit, for those, Lord, awaiting surgery, for those recovering from surgery, for those who are enduring treatments, for those, Lord, who rang the bell after their last cancer treatment, we pray that the Holy Spirit would comfort them every step of the way. Lord, bless your doctors and nurses. Bless your therapists, your psychiatrists. Lord, bless all who tend to the care of souls and body. May they be agents of your healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And for those saints that have gone on to be with you in glory, we pray, God, that their lives would continue to inspire us, continue to challenge us, continue to remind us of what it means to follow Jesus with heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love others as He has loved us. For those saints, Lord, that are in our hearts right now that remind us, we give You thanks. Lord, in Your mercy, Hear our prayers. We pray together as they, as they taught us, Lord, and as you taught all of us, the prayer to our Father, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ann. <laughs> Psalm 122 says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It's good to be together in the house of the Lord. Uh, I've had so many discussions over these last six months about uh, returning to church, whether or not people will return to worship, why people don't return to worship, why people do return to worship. Uh, how to engage people that come to worship. Or how to encourage those who need to worship Jesus. Everyone has an answer. I bet I get... I bet I get three or four emails a week from different people about how to fix or cause the problem. Most of those answers lead to more questions. I'll just be honest with you. They just... But there is some good news. Uh, Lifeway Research did uh, a, a poll amongst uh, Protestant pastors. 98% of those pastors that they interviewed said that as of August, 98% uh, of them are back in uh, in-person worship. So that means the church is open. At least 98% of them are, are open. The other part of that is about 50% of the people are returning to worship. Somewhere between 50 to 70% of people are actually coming back to church. They're all proud that the church is open just from afar, right? So there's always a challenge, right? That's based on the, what's happened since March 2020. Another bit of news that happened uh, from a different survey was that led to some of the effects of the isolation that we've had during the pandemic. Part of it is suicide rates dropped during the pandemic. But, comma, suicide rates among 10 to 14 year olds rose 13%. Between 10 and 14 year olds rose 13%. Some of y'all are a little older than me. What were you thinking about at 10 or 11? Some of y'all were still playing moldy peg in the dirt, right? Or figuring out how you could get that tall when you were playing marbles. 10 to 14, the suicide rate rose 13%. And among Hispanic males, it rose 5%. Which is frightening. It's been a hard time. And some of us don't know how hard it's really been. But the good news is we can come together and worship. 
We can come together and love one another. We can come together and engage one another, not only in devotion to God, but devotion to each other. The writer of Hebrews, nearly 1900 and something years ago, saw that there was a need for people to come together to worship, to not in the King James, forsake the assembling of themselves together. But already there was a problem. <laughs> that, that's why he writes, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together as some have done already. <laughs> I'm so glad that you've chosen to come today. I'm so glad that you've chosen to come and worship today. I'm so glad that you've come today to encourage one another. Some of y'all have had a hard week. I know you have because I've talked to you about it. I'm so glad that you came today. The isolation has been hard on us all. Gathering together and, and sharing our joys and our sorrows, our failures and our victories, our struggles and our gains. Coming together like that helps us all hold fast to our faith. The writer of Hebrews reminds us that Jesus Himself is the reason the cause, the impetus for all of us to gather together. And to neglect gathering together in some respects is to neglect the great gift of Jesus Himself. There are three exhortations in this passage in Hebrews. Three things that the writer of Hebrews tells us that we need to do. We're going to look at those three things. Verse 19 through 22 reminds us that we are to approach God with a true heart. That talks about our faith. Approach God with a true heart. There are so many things that uh, we come in here with, uh, distracted with on Sundays. I I'm grateful that I have one less distraction because Marcus is running the Mevo camera for Facebook. Praise the Lord. Y'all know how hard it is to preach and look at your phone and see that it says, nah, 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 and you're like, oh, but I got to uh, keep on preaching. <laughs> Some of y'all must be distracted by the Bible translation on your phones because I see you looking at it and laughing. I got to find out what Bible translation you're reading on your phone because it's great. Because I look up and some of y'all are going, I've got to find out what that Bible translation is. Maybe it's on BibleGateway.com. There's so many things that distract us. Our, our back hurts. Our knees hurt. Our head hurts. My ankle hurts. The kids acted the fool on the way to church. Mom and Daddy acted the fool yesterday out in the yard. Your team lost. My team won. <laughs> that's kind of scary Tennessee's ruined the day before there are all kinds of things there's a, there's a myriad of misdirections and missteps in the milieu of our life that cause us to be distracted from worship there's all kinds of things but when we come together to worship there's a personal aspect to worship we come prepared to worship. There's a communal aspect. We're going to talk about that community part in a moment. But there's a personal aspect. When I know in my life, if I'm going through a, a time of spiritual famine, if my spiritual life is as dry as a dust bowl, I generally can point to the reason why. I have met the enemy, and as Pogo said, he is us. I am my own worst enemy when it comes to spiritual famine. I can make it happen by simply not preparing myself in worship. Galatians, uh, I want to read this passage from Galatians 6, verses 7 through 10. It's from the message translation. Maybe this is the translation you all are reading on your phone. I think it translates this passage wonderfully. Here's, here's what Paul says through the message. Don't be misled. No one makes a fool of God. What a person plants, 
he will harvest. The person who plants selfishness, ignoring the needs of others, ignoring God, harvests a crop of weeds. And all he'll have to show for his life is weeds. But the one who plants in response to God, letting God's Spirit do the growth work in it, harvest a crop of real life, eternal life. So let's not allow ourselves to, be, to get fatigued doing good. At the right time, we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up or quit. Right now, therefore, every time we get the chance, let's work for the benefit of all, starting with the people closest to us in the community of faith. Yes, gathering for worship is personal. It's a, a regular practice of worship that we need to personally renew our spirits. We take a one or maybe two hours out of the week. If you're a if you're if you go to Sunday school, we take maybe two hours a, a break of two hours from what's outside these walls, so that we can be prepared to start the week off in a better place. We start the week off in church on Sunday, and we take one percent of our week. You hear me? One percent of your week is spent, at least on a general basis, in church. What a difference that one percent can make. It's actually less than one percent, I think, if you skip Sunday school. And that makes you, even the hell's angels were one percenters. We're like less than one percent. But what a difference that 1% can make in your week if you start the week off personally connected to the body of Christ. But there's a communal aspect. The second exhortation that we have not only is to approach God with a true heart, but it says to hold fast to our confession of faith. My personal practice when I lead you in the Apostles' Creed is to say, let us confess our faith together by saying, I believe. Because I believe it, you believe it, but together we believe it. <laughs> There's a communal aspect to that. And we've talked about the fact that that confession that we make, that, that uh, expression of our faith is shared with churches all around the world. Part of worship is personal. But part of worship is gathering is communal. We need that regular gathering. We need that. We need that as a, as a people. We need to know how God is at work in each of our lives. We, we need to know how God is at work in our, the life of our church together. Our food ministry group meets uh, each week, uh, just about every week, uh, to gather up food and to distribute food every other week and and, and they, they gather to, to feed people. But the greatest part of that ministry is, is seeking the well-being of others. Is, is catching up with each other. How are you doing? Well, how are you doing? We, we, we talk about each other's knees and backs and hips and surgeries and all of that sort of thing. But we connect with each other on a spiritual level. That song, And Are We Yet Alive, talks about what troubles we've been through since we saw each other last. I don't know about y'all, but a week sometimes can be troublesome. But to be able to get up and come sling some cans in a box and commiserate with others encourages me. We have a responsibility to gather for worship. Yeah, going to church is a habit. So is brushing your teeth and flossing and going to your doctor on a regular basis for checkups. Those are good habits. Now, to be sure, there are bad habitual practices. I probably am going to eat some of that chocolate cake. And it's George Ann's fault. I did not succumb to temptation. She overcame me with chocolate. <laughs> Boy, I hope that cake's good. If it's not, I'm really, really going to be disappointed. Okay, it's good. All right. Look, it's easy to pick up a bad habit and keep it going. It's hard 
to develop a good habit. But coming together and being accountable to one another is good. It's good to be accountable to Jesus and, and each other. It, these passages, the, the New Interpreter's Bible says, these passages focus on faith, hope, and love. It's good to come together and talk about faith, hope, and love. Sometimes I need encouragement. Sometimes you need encouragement. And there's always somebody that's encouraging. Do y'all have that somebody in your life? I have people in my life, I don't, if they've had a bad day, they haven't told me about it yet. But I know they have bad days. But they encourage me. Used to be an old preacher and you followed. His practice was to go visit at the hospital. This was back in the day before HIPAA hit, right? And he would he would go into every single room. Hey, Linda, how you doing? Boy, it's good to see you. Let me pray for you. And he'd go pray for you. And then he'd walk into the next room and he'd walk down the hall and he'd say, Oh, Amy. Oh, Amy, is that your pastor? What's his name? Oh, that's my pastor, Ralph. Oh, he's such a good pastor. He's such a good pastor. I've heard of the good work he's doing. God, let, let me pray for y'all. He may or may not have known that preacher from Adam's house cat, but I guarantee you that preacher and that person, when he walked out of the room, you're like, man, that, that feels pretty good. As opposed to somebody like me coming along going, well, how you doing? You all right? Well, I'm glad that surgery didn't take longer than nine hours. Oh, you had trouble. Oh, that's too bad. I got trouble. You know, my toe hurts. Somebody always has a good word from Jesus. Sometimes it's you. Sometimes it's you. Sometimes it's me. And on some of those rare occasions, we all have a good word. From Jesus. And we all need it. Madison Pierce says the confession is ours. It's corporate. And the, the, the exhortation is to, is to be responsible to each other in a communal way. But we're also to encourage one another towards love and good deeds. That's the third exhortation to provoke one another to love and good deeds. Now we, we're probably going to provoke one another here in a little while. We, we're going to provoke each other to eat another piece of pie. As a friend of mine reminded me, uh, just eat the blueberry pie. We had a pastor friend, the, uh, the, the, night, the night that he died, that day had been at a fellowship dinner much like what we're going to have. And my friend had tried to encourage him to eat the blueberry pie. All there was was just a slice of blueberry pie. And my friend said, no, uh, my, my pastor friend said, no, I can't eat. I can't eat. My, my wife will get on to me. And my friend said, just eat the pie. He said, no, I can't eat the pie. It, it's... Now this man was about as big around as your thumb, but he had some health problems. He said, no, I can't eat the pie. My friend said, just eat the blueberry pie. And he said, no, I can't do it. That night he died and went on to be with the Lord. And my friend says, you know what? Just eat the pie. You never know when it might be your last piece of blueberry pie. My pastor friend was Randall Peacock. He had a, a big influence on my life. We gather together to consider how to provoke or to encourage or to, uh, to, to move each other into love and good deeds. Madison Pierce says, the picture here in Hebrews is of service. How we can be of service to each other. And she reminds us that we gather together for the sake of others. Let that marinate. We gather together for the sake of others. I may not get something out of whatever it is that we're doing, but it's not about me. You may not get something out of whatever else it is that we may be doing, but it's not about you. 
It's about us together. And, and we listen to those same old stories. But those same old stories one day will be told in our memories and not in our midst. And we'll remember. And that memory will be for a blessing. We gather together for the sake of the others. Part of gathering together is to consider how we can love one another, how we can love our neighbor, how we can be challenged to have a, a viable, vital faith that loves the unloved, feeds the hungry, sees the unseen, gathers the lost, that seeks to serve rather than be served. How can we do that? Well, that's what we think about. That's what we consider when we come together. I don't think it's by a, a pure happenstance that the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples when they were gathered together in one place at Pentecost. They were gathered in one place, if you remember, and they were praying, and the Holy Spirit descended upon them. There's something different that happens when we gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. Jesus said in Matthew 18, 20, where two or three are gathered, there I am in the midst of them. There's a different dynamic that happens when we are gathered. I'm so glad you gathered here today to worship. I'm glad that our friends online have gathered together with us today to worship. Some of them adopted Facebook just so they could go to church. It's a small step to some of you, but for them, it's a huge step because they didn't know how to use that phone that way. I'm so grateful that we've gathered together to worship. Hold fast. When hurts and confusion come, hold fast to your faith. When, when the world seems to turn against you, hold fast to your hope. When anger and selfishness rises up within you and, and comes a lot easier than joy and giving, hold fast to love. Hold fast to Jesus. We're going to gather together here in a few moments and, and share a meal together, celebrate a milestone, provoke one another to fried chicken and Green bean casserole, deviled eggs, chocolate. We're going to enjoy being together as the community of faith at First Methodist in Jackson, Alabama. That's what we're going to do. The meal, the music, the obstacle course for the kids which all be really fun to watch. Gardner's still a kid, right? Yeah. Um, he's like, nope, done my obstacle course. Don't have to do it again. Yeah, I'm a sailor now. All of those things are just a, just a means to the end. To be together, to encourage one another, to be encouraged. To celebrate the, the grace and the goodness and the creativity of people. And to be encouraged to go on with the 99% of our week that's left. And be faithful followers of Jesus Christ. If you're here today, I don't care whether you've been coming to this church for 6, 16, 60 years. If something is stirred within you and you want to grow deeper in your faith, please come share that with me. I'd love to help you. Maybe you're here and you've gone to church that long and you've realized you don't really know Jesus and you want to become a believer in Jesus. Come share that with me. You can share it with me around a piece of cake or you can email me or you can snoop and find me on social media. I'm here most days. Please, follow Jesus so that you can hold fast. Hold fast.
Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Have mercy on all who seek you, Jesus. May your gracious self show us truly what it means to hold fast to faith, hope, and love in, through, and with you. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Our last hymn comes on page uh, 362 in your hymnal. Nothing but the blood. Stand together with me as you're able. It was gently suggested to me by my SPRC chair that perhaps I might want to offer a blessing over the food while I was in here so that y'all could go ahead and eat when you got there. Ah, uh, amen. Everybody get there. Uh, please, it, we'd love for you to stay and have dinner uh, on the grounds. You can sit at a table. You don't actually have to be on the ground. Uh, our friend Ed Williams congratulated me on our correct grammatical use of dinner on the grounds, not dinner on the ground. You get on that bouncy house, you might be on the ground. But, uh, let's pray and be blessed and then go and be blessed together as we share a meal. God and Father of us all, Pour out your blessing upon your people as they gather around the table to share a meal as Jesus did with his friends. Lord, may we be blessed and encouraged. May the food empower us and, and inspire us to go out and to be creative and caring and compassionate towards others. Bless our time together in the food and those who prepared it. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Go in peace.